My name is Jonathan Arfa. I'm a data scientist at Magnetic in New York, and I'm here to talk to you about algorithms that sample from streams. So here's our question. We have a, a stream of data. We want to store a representative sample of it in order to understand the distribution on the fly. Um, let's say you look at an online advertising company, as do I, and um, you're bidding on online ads. You want to know, for example, anything about what we're paying on for ads at this moment. Uh, you don't just want to know how many dollars have I spent in the past hour. You might want to know what percentage of ads have I spent more than a penny on, what's the 99th percentile, what's the 5th percentile. For this, you might want to sample. You might want to carry around, say, 1,000 or 5,000 events with you, and it's from a stream, which makes things a bit more complicated. Uh, a stream of data, basically, it means that the data is continuous, um, it's of unknown length, that's important, and most importantly, it means that you can't just use the normal stuff you might do if you have batch data. So if you had all of your data was, let's say, on your hard drive or in memory, you could do something as simple as shuffle the data, and if you want a sample of 1,000, just take the first 1,000 events on that shuffle data. But the data is not on your hard drive. Um, if you, the data was a stream, but you had a known length, let's say it was going to be of length 10,000, and you want 1,000 samples, you could do a streaming algorithm where you just say, every event added to my sample with probability one-tenth. That'll get you approximately 1,000 events, but we don't know the length, so uh, life is a bit more complicated. And the answer, the classic answer to this problem is reservoir sampling. It gives us a uniformly random, fixed-size sample from a stream of events of unknown length. It's a beautiful, simple algorithm. It gets us exactly k samples. Let's say, again, k is 1,000. It's unbiased, which means that every single event in the stream has an equal probability of being in the sample, or the reservoir, as we call it, at the end of, this, at the end of the stream, or whenever we choose to look at it. It's fast, and because we only want 1,000 events, at any point in time, it's only storing up to 1,000 events. Real simple, two steps. Uh, first, k events in the stream are just automatically added. And then at that point, it gets a bit more complicated for the 1,001th uh, event in the stream. There's a 1,000 over 1,001 chance of it entering the reservoir, and so on. Uh, so the first few events after the stream is full are almost definitely going to be put into the reservoir, and that probability goes down over time. Um, but you should also note that the probability of an event that goes into the reservoir being knocked out at a later time is also decreasing. And those two things happen to cancel out. Um, if you do the math, it's rather beautiful. And if you're ever interviewing for data science positions, you'll find a lot of companies ask you to approve that on the whiteboard. So it might be something to study. Um, now that I've explained the code, here it is. It's pretty simple. Um, if there's enough samples in the reservoir, draw a random number. If that random number is, uh, draw the random number from 0 to i minus 1. If that random number is less than the size of the reservoir, you replace that random event with a new event. And so for all the algorithms I'll be showing today, we ran this simulation. Uh, basically, over 24 simulated hours, we divided it into four six-hour periods um, with uh, new, new simulated events coming in at a rate of 10 events per second, one event per second, 30 and 15 events per second. Um, and what this chart is showing us is that reservoir sampling is doing exactly what it promises to do. It's giving us an uh, unbiased sample over all events. And this is kind of, this chart right here is kind of like a, a histogram through time, um, showing us the red line is the age of the oldest event in the reservoir, uh, which is increasing almost linearly. Uh, 95th percentile is also increasing pretty close to linear. Um, and at this point, for the green, which is the median, and purple, which is the mean, um, around the time that we switch from one event per second to 30 events per second, those get dropped basically because a lot of older events are being removed. The oldest events are increasing, the age of the oldest events are increasing linearly with time. This is sampling from the beginning of time, which may or may not be what we, be what we want. And in our case, it's not what we want, because unbiased property, it's something statisticians love, it's something that's beautiful. Um, in the world of online advertising, what happens at 3 a.m., what happens at 3 p.m. are completely different worlds. Um, we probably don't even, for most of our applications, we don't want to analyze stuff on the fly that happened more than an hour ago. We might not want to care about anything that happened more than 15 minutes ago. So in this case, we want some sort of algorithm that's biased, biased in time, and, but still has predictable properties. Uh, which brings us to the verbs. 
uh, which is something we have developed in-house. It stands for Variable Incoming Rate Bias Sampler. Variable Incoming Rate, because like the simulation, um, in the real world, the incoming rate can vary wildly, and it's biased. Specifying not only K, we're also telling it how old we want the mean age in our reservoir to be. And the first K events in, this sample, in the stream are added automatically. And at that point, we start asking the question, what's the current mean age in the reservoir, and how does that compare to what we want it to be? If the current mean age is too old, we add new events to make it younger. Um, and in classic reservoir sampling, that was always, we're always replacing the random event. Um, and you could do that, or you could do something else. So there's two versions of the verb sampler. Uh, there's the exponential verb, which is where we're replacing a random event uh, whenever we choose to add a new event. Um, so we're, you'll note that now we're storing the current sum of timestamps in order so that we can uh, figure out what the mean age is at any point. And uh, right here, if the current mean age is older than the desired mean age, we um, add a new event and use it to replace a random old event. For the uniform verb, very similar. The difference is that instead of replacing a random event, we're replacing, we're replacing the oldest event. So this collections.dq object, it's a priority queue. Um, you tell it ahead of time, I want you to be 100 samples big, and the first 100 things you add just get added in the normal way. And then anything, any subsequent samples you add will push out the oldest example. Uh, so if we want strong guarantees about how old the oldest events in our sample will be, this is going to give us good stuff. Uh, so two questions I want to consider real quick before we show how they, the charts, how they did the simulations. Um, first off, to what extent are these random samples? So in classic reservoir sampling, uh, I mean, given a constant, given a fixed data stream, in classic reservoir sampling, there's randomness first in whether you add a new object, and second in which, which event this object replaces. So the exponential verb, there's no randomness in whether you add a new object, given the current state of the stream, the current state of the algorithm. But there's randomness in what, what uh, event you replace. The uniform verb, however, given a data stream, will be deterministic. Uh, and actually, if the incoming rate is constant, the uniform verb is just going to reduce to picking every nth event and putting it into our sampler. Uh, second question is, what happens if the incoming rate is too low to keep k events at a, at a defined mean age. So to take a rather extreme example, let's say we, um, we want 10,000 samples, uh, we want the mean age to be 10 minutes, and the incoming rate is one event per hour. That's just obviously not going to work. We had two things we wanted. We wanted a defined number of samples and a defined mean age. We have to relax one of those. So in this case, what happens is the mean age is just going to balloon. Um, nothing really to be done with that, but it's something to be aware of. All right, so exponential verb, if it's the name that way because the samples are distributed exponentially with regards to time. Here's how it did in the simulation. Um, you'll note this middle portion right there is where the incoming rate was one event per second, far too low to keep the mean age constant, so it ballooned up exactly as we'd expect it to. However, um, when it, at around 18 hours where it moves from 30 events per second to 15 events per second, the move is completely seamless, which is beautiful. That's what we wanted. Uniform verb, no prizes for guessing. That would be uniformly distributed. Um, and same thing. So this uh, transition at 18 hours is completely seamless, um, but around the transition to one event per second at six hours causes the, all the ages to just balloon up. Um, so up till now, uh, you explicitly specify what mean age you want, but let's say you have a more complicated request, like uh, let's say I want 90% of my samples to be within the past hour. And I don't know what mean age that is, I just know I want 90% of my samples to be within the past hour. Uh, so for both the exponential uh, verb and the uniform verb, we have equations for that. Um, I won't go into really how we got those, but if you for the statisticians in the room, if you know the CDF of the distribution, it's relatively easy. All right, so we are not the first people to think of this. Um, by this, I mean not the first people to wonder what if we had reservoir sampling that was biased. Uh, this guy, Chindu Agarwal, has a very interesting algorithm, a lot of nice, pretty properties, um, and for two reasons, it's not what we wanted, but still interesting. So here's the algorithm. First off, an event enters, there's, a, there's one parameter called PN. 
So new event enters the reservoir at all with probability PA. Uh, let's assume that's 1.0. So every, new, every event's going to enter the reservoir. Um, so once we've decided it's going to enter the reservoir, we look at the current, ratio, the current percentage of the reservoir that's full. So let's say at this point the reservoir is 10% full. Then there's a 10% probability that the event replaces uh, an event that's already in the reservoir, and a 90% probability that the event is just added to the end, making the reservoir bigger. And so the first few events are almost definitely going to be added to the end, uh, added, making the reservoir bigger. When the reservoir is already 99% big, then every new event has an only 1% chance of making the reservoir bigger and a 99% chance of replacing an older event. So it doesn't, you know, all these other algorithms, if you ask for a thousand event, a thou, uh, reservoirs of size 1,000, after 1,000 events, the reservoir is full. This one has a longer ramp up period to the reservoir being at your desired size. Um, here's the code. Um, I guess I went over exactly that. You take, you f get a random int between zero and the uh, maximum size, and depending on where that falls with regards to the state of the reservoir, you either append it to the end or replace an event that's already in there. Um, so you notice it's distributed exponentially with regards to time. This is very similar to the um, the exponential verb. I mean, for a given p in, it, if the exponential verb has a constant rate of incoming data, it could be an almost identical algorithm. Um, and here's the performance in each of these four periods. Um, it kind of looks pretty similar, but you'll note that at 18 hours, when we went from 30 events per second to 15 events per second, um, the, it did not transition at all. It doesn't even attempt to deal with variable incoming rates. So that's the second problem. The first problem with this, well, problem is a strong word, but the first thing we did not like is that there's a ramp up time until it's full. The second thing is that we have uh, strong variations in the incoming rate for our data, and this doesn't deal with this at all. And so this is, kind of blew through this talk. Um, this is basically the end. Uh, the conclusion is you want to sample uniformly over all events without regards to time. Use old school reservoir sampling. Um, if you want to sample from a defined period of time with a defined shape, use the verb. Yeah, I also made this overly complicated table. In case any of you care to look later, uh, please don't look at it all now. But one thing I would like to point out is that um, I like to think of this as the classic reservoir sampling and Algar Ball's uh, reservoir as sampling over events, whereas the verbs sample over time. Uh, sorry, so his question was, what do we end up using? Uh, as a statistician, I love that exponential curve. It's very appealing to me. Um, my colleagues who are all software engineers love the defined limits on the uniform verb. So that's what we're using. Um, it's, there's no one right answer to that question. The question was, what are real-world examples of how we're actually applying this? Um, I kind of oversimplified that earlier. Basically, when a new ad, ad auction comes up, we want to understand how valuable this is relative to what we've been seeing recently. So we have an internal model that predicts for new, every, any given event the probability that this event will result in a conversion. Um, and if, if these numbers are all pretty close to zero, you know, 1e negative 3, 1e negative 4. Uh, but if a new event comes in, we want to understand if that is relative to recent events in the first percentile, the 50th percentile, the 99th percentile. So we keep the sample around to build uh, what's called the cumulative distribution function. And basically just compare the new event to the samples and see where it falls. The answer would, I mean, you can't compare it um, on the fly to exactly know what, but the answers are going to be the same. It's just the bigger your sample, the more closely it'll mimic the population. Um, and of course, the, um, the fact that there's, we now have these versions that are biased with regards to time, your definition of a population is changing. Right, so your question is basically saying, um, this idea is that different times of day might have different incoming rates, and could we say, look back 24 hours and say, well, at this time yesterday, this was the incoming rate, let's just use that. Um, a few answers. First off, an earlier iteration of this algorithm didn't do that. It did look at the previous 10 minutes for the incoming rate. Um, and that was more complicated. And if there was a sudden change, then we had to wait 10 minutes, uh, which is not what you're suggesting. But, and also this method with just comparing what we want the mean age to be with what it actually is. Um, I, I see your point that, that that could probably be possible. This seems simpler. Um, there's another issue, which uh, when this man was asking about real-world example, 
I definitely, I was still oversimplifying it, we're uh, dividing out these samples by campaigns. And a campaign might have looked very different yesterday, it might not have existed yesterday. His question is, do we have a tweak that adds the interestingness of the event? Um, the answer is no. Uh, it's an interesting question. I imagine, you know, when something, if we were sampling over something where we cared about these long tail black swan events, we might want to start looking at that. Um, I honestly don't know too much about it, uh, aside from following uh, Nicholas Nassim Taleb on Twitter and his crazy rants. I really don't know too much about it, uh, but I should because it's fascinating stuff. Good question. So his question was, how do we decide on the sample size and what's enough? Uh, for now, it's really just been rule of thumbs. 5,000 feels like a good number. Um, that's how a lot of real world sampling theory gets done. At Magnetic, we move fast. Thank, Thank you. you.